Thank you very much, Maria. Our Nita Levy is the last speaker before we have our Q&A. And don't forget to fill out your cards with your questions. And uh, Nita Levy and her colleagues have a, a wonderful uh, display out front uh, about Paul's Club, which is one of the most incredibly innovative situations going on in Vancouver. And I really admire what Nita and Michael have done in order to support people that were neglected until they looked after them, I feel. Nita Levy. Good morning. At the age of 62, our brother-in-law, Paul, who lived in England, was diagnosed with early onset young onset Alzheimer's disease. Paul was a fit, six foot four inch man who had absolutely nothing else wrong with him. We were incredibly fortunate as a family to find a day program that had been designed specifically to meet the unique needs of individuals like Paul, diagnosed at a young age. I cannot tell you what a difference, what an amazing difference this program made in the lives of our brother-in-law, Paul, and my sister, Anne. In 2012, Michael and I were both retired. Michael, by the way, is my husband. Michael is a retired chartered accountant, and I'm a retired RN. We decided to find out if such a program existed in Vancouver. And if not, we were going to start one. Paul's Club is now a five-and-a-half-year-old, Vancouver-based, grassroots, social and recreational club. Together with Chelsea, our program director, who has a degree in therapeutic recreation, we designed Paul's Club to meet the unique needs of individuals living with an early onset young onset dementia causing illness. Our main goal at Paul's Club is to have fun and at the same time for all of us to remain socially integrated, physically active and stimulated in a warm and welcoming environment. An emotionally safe place where the diagnosis is left at the door and where the emphasis is on what we can do not what we cannot do. As you can see from the pictures behind me, particularly because of their relatively young age, Paul's Club members are physically able and fit. And all of us are always participating in whatever we're doing, be it yoga, an exercise class, drumming, or any other activity. By chance, since day one, we have been pretty evenly split between men and women. There are never more than 18 of us on any given day. We walk every afternoon, but it's not raining or snowing, for two, two and a half hours. We now buy dog cookies in bulk. <laughs> and our walks always end at an ice cream parlor. And when I say always, in five and a half years, We've only missed an ice cream once, and it wasn't our fault. <laughs> a program like ours didn't exist prior to the opening of Paul's Club in 2012, not because of a lack of need,
but because of a lack of available public funding. Currently, Paul's Club does not receive any consistent public funding. However, we have never and will never decline any one membership on financial grounds. This fundamental piece of Paul's Club philosophy is something we constantly struggle to convey. Grassroots does not mean that we are private, but rather that we are inclusive, not exclusive. We wanted to place Paul's Club in a neutral space that had absolutely no connotation of ill health. It's located in the Hampton Inn Hotel on Robson Street. Paul's Club looks like your living room, only larger, complete with couches, coffee tables and palm tree. We're open three days per week from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Being open 50 weeks per year has enabled some of our family members to remain in employment as they have found themselves unexpectedly the only wage earner. We organise transportation to and from Paul's Club and having Paul's Club open for six hours each day also critically provides family members with time to do whatever they want to do. I suppose if you boil it right down, the main goal of Paul's Club is to have fun. We would be delighted to welcome all of you to come and visit and have coffee with us. Although please do not all come at the same time. <laughs> be prepared to spend your time laughing because that's what we're doing for most of the day. As you will have seen, been seeing, have I still got the photographs? Can I press it again? I think it's much better to look at that than me. <laughs> Chelsea, will you click it again? No? All right. Yes, sure. Okay, sure. Thank you. As you will have seen in the photographs, we're also very fortunate to be located in one of the most beautiful cities in the world, minutes from the seawall and with a climate that permits us to be out most days, even in the winter. What could be a better way to spend your day than meeting with a wonderful group of people from every walk of life and background, starting with coffee and pastries, then having a yoga or exercise class, followed by lunch in an Italian restaurant, catching up on current affairs, then going for a leisurely walk along the seawall, often to Granville Island, taking the ferry back and ending the day at a gelato storm. I'm very grateful to the clinic for giving me this opportunity to talk about Paul's Club. Thank you, Dr. Beattie, Dr. Nygaard, Dr. Foti, Dr. Sung and Dr. Lee. And in particular, thank you, Amy Freeman, for all your help and support over the last five and a half years that Paul's Club has been in existence, and for everything that you all do. We have friends here today who join us every day on our walks, and I wanted to take this opportunity to publicly thank them. Like all of you, we cannot wait for the day when the world-class brain clinic announces that they have found a cure and Paul's Club will no longer be relevant. Thank you for your time and if anyone would like more information, please come and chat with us at our booth in the foyer. Thank you.